G'day, I'm Nick Dingle. Welcome to lesson number three for software engineering. In this one, we're going to be setting up our folder that we're going to be using for all of our scripts. We're going to set it up on the cloud. If you are not the person that uses the cloud and you store things on a thumb drive or on your desktop, well, it, this is your lesson to stop doing that. Okay, thumb drives die, get lost, hard drives corrupt, computers die or get stolen. Much worse. Please don't do it. If you don't trust the cloud, I don't know if programming is for you. Just saying. Now, I personally use Google Drive, but you could use anything. You could use Google Drive. You could use um, OneDrive. You could use Apple iCloud. Anyone is fine. I personally prefer the experience of the Google Drive app, and I prefer the way it stores and uses files. So what we're going to do for this one is you're simply going to jump, if you're going to join me, jump to Google, type in Google Drive for desktop, click on the first link that is in that, and select the download drive for desktop. Now the install process is very simple. You click on the file, it will run, and then it will ask you to log in. So you can either use your Gmail, or if you're a New South Wales Australian student, use your ad education email and you get unlimited storage, which is fan bloody tasty. Now, once you've run through that setup process, you're gonna get two things. The first thing you'll get is an icon in your notifications bar down here, which looks like this. If I click on that, you can see that we've got a whole bunch of activity going on. So this is files that have been created and uploaded or deleted, all that kind of stuff. You got notifications, which I tend not to get much of. And it tells you how much storage you're using. Now that's not how much storage you're using on the computer. It's how much you're using on the cloud. And that's why I love using Google Drive for desktop. The second thing that Google Drive for desktop does is it gives you direct access to your Google Drive through the File Explorer. If I go down to this PC, you can see it makes an icon just here, which I absolutely love. Now, if we jump into here and then we jump into my drive, these are all the files that I store on the cloud. And this is where I'm going to make my folder for all my Python projects. So let's create a new folder. Let's go bang, new folder, and call it Python. Okay, so if you need to, pause the video, go and do all those, get your folder set up on the cloud. Or if you're really that stubborn, go and put it on your desktop and then I'll hate you forever. Mildly. And then let's go into Visual Studio and get that set up. Now, the benefit of doing this is anything that we make now and save to Google Drive, or sorry, save to Visual Studio, is automatically getting uploaded to Google Drive. And just to prove my point, if I go to my Google Drive, like so, oh my God, don't do that. then you'll notice that it's already made my Python folder up on the cloud because that's what the app does. All right, let's close this down. Let's head to Visual Studio Code and let's open up that folder. So the way I like to work in Studio Code, you can work in individual files, but I 100% prefer to open a whole folder and just make multiple files within that. So let's head up to File at the top. Let's grab Open Folder. Go down to Google Drive, My Drive, Python. Okay. Once you've done that, you'll notice a few more icons appear on the left-hand side here. We get the Explorer, and the most important thing is the folders. So if I click on the folders, you'll notice it says folders is Python, because that's the one we selected. And then you get a bunch of options. And anything that we do here automatically reflects inside the actual folder itself. So that's why I like to work in this manner. Because again, if it updates here, then it's gonna be uploaded to the cloud. Lovely. So let's make a file, let's make a Python script. So up the top next to the word Python, there is a plus file button, not the one next to that, that's a new folder. So I'm gonna click on new file and let's do a hello world program. So type in hello.py. And you'll notice that before I hit enter, it's already recognized that .py means it's going to be a Python file. So if I hit enter, it creates the file. You'll notice it's already in the folder and that means Google Drive is already uploading it and it's opened up the file ready to go in a new window. So what we're going to do is it's going to write a couple of commands. We'll hit play and look at what it does and then I'll go and explain what it's doing and what the different options are basically. Now, let me just move the screen out of the way. If you've got a little warning down the bottom saying interpreter, select interpreter, you simply have to click on this down here where it says select interpreter, and then you select the version of Python you want to use. And for me, 
I've only got one that we installed in the previous video. So 3.12.1, and that will make sure it's set. And you never have to worry about that again, usually. All right, so let's write a command. Let's go print hello, comma, world. So if you need to, pause the video and write that down. But all I'm going to do is hit the play button, and we'll see what's called a terminal appear. So whenever you play your Python programs, by default, they always appear in the terminal. Terminal is text-based, which means all we can deal in is words and numbers. That's fine for now. Let's keep it simple, hey? This gobbledygook here is basically Visual Studio running your Python file. You'll see that it's running the Python executable, and there's your script. So it's actually telling Python, hey, run this file, please. Then it puts whatever the output of your program is, gets splattered onto the page there. And because it's done, it just opens up another line like this. And then if I hit play again, you'll notice that it does it again. Okay, it runs it, displays it, and it's ready for the next one. So this is the play button, or if you prefer, you can press F5, which I personally prefer keyboard shortcuts. So F5 on the keyboard, and it will say, well, what, what are you doing? Well, I'm doing a Python file. So if we click on that, it does a whole lot more. Okay, it takes a bit longer. But there we go. It does the same thing in the end. And I do have to go back to my folders after I do the run with F5. It's slightly different. You'll notice the play button is quicker, but it does a lot less. And we'll talk about that in a future video. It's outside the scope. Now, what are we doing here? So when you're writing a Python script, you're writing commands to Python to tell the computer what to do. And the first and simplest thing you can do is print a message on the screen. And thankfully, Python just uses the print command. Now, capitals matter. If I put print with a capital P, this will not work. Okay, so just be mindful that it has to be purely lowercase. Now, the space after it, I just personally like to put the space because it makes it a little bit easier to read. You must have the brackets, and then the quotes allow me to type a message that goes onto the screen. Without the quotes, Python has a massive heart attack and it doesn't know what hello or world mean. But if I put quotes around it, then it goes, ah, you want to print a message. We call these strings, okay? When you put quotes around something, double quotes or even single quotes, they just have to match at the start and at the end. Okay, when you do that, you create a string, which is literally letters that have been strung together into a string of characters. Okay, and when you press print, the print command, oh sorry, press print, press play, the print command then puts that onto the terminal. So obviously that means then, if I type in another print and press play, you'll see it does multiple messages. And again, if I do more, like so, this is Python, more exclamation marks, because apparently we need them. You'll see that it prints multiple times. Now, the reason I did this, not teaching how to suck eggs, but it's really important to note that when you do multiple commands in a script, Python will always start on line one, and it'll always go one line at a time, and it will obey exactly what you tell it to. So if Python does things out of order, that's because you've told Python to do things out of order. So really important to note that. So hello world comes first. So that's the first message that's printed and then the next and the next and the next and the next. Okay, until it hits the bottom of the script at which point it shuts down and we're finished. So with that said and done, let's do a couple little things with print. The first one might be, well, how do I separate lines? Everything is sort of crammed together in this gigantic mess. How do I actually put a space between those? Well, the way to do it is simply by typing print and then putting empty brackets because print has two jobs by default, to print your message and then go to the next line. Print the message, go the next line. Well, if I don't have a message, it's only got one job, go the next line. So if I press play on this one, you'll see it just simply puts a gap in between Hello World and I'm finally making more videos. Okay, with that said and done, there is one last little thing we can look at for the print command, and that is taking control of that second step. The first step, printing the message is fine, and then going to the next line is not always what you wanna do. I wanna put these three words together without putting them in a single 
print message. And the way you do that is straight after your string, the double quotes that is, you put a comma and space, and we're gonna take control of what's called end. So in other words, message and then end. So end equals, and then we're gonna give it a new value. By default, it is backslash n, which is new line. But I'm gonna put two double quotes or two single quotes. It's up to you which one you use. But basically, the end is nothing. So have a look at the message now. So you can see this, because it didn't go the next line, the next print gets put up with next to this. So print this, and it doesn't go the next line, is, and then we're going to the next line. So that means I could change the end of this print, and now all three prints are put together in the same line, like so. And it's got a double space because there's a space here and a space here. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. So I hope you learned something. I hope it helped. In the next one, we're going to be looking at what's called variables, one of the most important concepts probably you'll ever learn in programming. So I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.